but I think that the public is more ready for this than, than the chiropractic profession really is. And so, you know, we've traditionally been kind of like, oh, people don't get it, but it's like, no, no, I think they do as long as someone's bringing it to them in a clear and simple way. Well, welcome everybody, Dr. Ron Oberstein, president of Life Chiropractic College West, and welcome to another edition of our Life by Life West. Uh, joining me is my co-host, my wife and my everything, Dr. Mary <laughs> Oberstein. Hey, Mary. Hey. And uh, and then we have a really great guest, someone who's been on our show before years ago. I think it probably goes back to maybe 2019 or 2020, no, I'm not 20, sure. but 2021, uh, I think. Yeah, but we're excited to have you back. Uh, we've got Dr. Lona Cook coming to us from Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I did, I, did I get that right? Yeah. You got it right. Chippewa All right. Because I'm you. Jack from the Titanic, right? <laughs> yes. I see you in Chippewa Falls. Yes. Right? If you guys don't know that, watch Titanic. That's Chippewa Falls. Really <laughs> made it on the map during that one. James Cameron must have added that in somewhere. But let me just give you a brief introduction on, on, on Dr. Lona, and then we're going to jump into our conversation because we've got some really cool things to talk about. Dr. Lona is a 2009 graduate from Northwestern College in Minneapolis, Minnesota, St. Paul, Minneapolis. Uh, after graduation, she was looking to go to San Diego and something happened, which we didn't talk about, but got her right back to her hometown where she had no idea. Last place on your mind, you said that you would probably end up, but sometimes, you know click your heels three times and Dorothy ends up back in Kansas. You know, you ended up in Chippewa Falls and uh, started to practice right away, uh, has a booming practice. I mean, grew from an individual all the way from a single doctor. Uh, now they have five doctors um, doing amazing things in the community, uh, has been involved in politics. I was the president of the Wisconsin Society of Chiropractic, um, you know, helped to get a legislator in who is a chiropractor in Wisconsin, uh, which really helps on the political side. Uh lectures frequently all over you've been to life west you're at the wave last year and and you've been there a few times and we were so thankful to have you come out and she's just an all-around wonderful person she's doing coaching uh with uh, the remarkable practice and she's just she's just truly lana and i really mean this lona you've got a heart of gold and you just you're a servant to chiropractic but yet you keep this balance with your family and your kids and you know all this other stuff which maybe we'll get into but um it's just a pleasure to have you on so thank you for joining us and making this a reality today i'm gonna need you to introduce me everywhere i go that was so sweet of you. thank you well oh. a lot of times i have to tell you when i'm out and get introduced and you probably realize you probably say sounds like a eulogy sometimes right you know, like <laughs> i go up and i feel like i died you know like oh in 1966 he did this in 76 it's like oh my god but well you deserve that and and i cut that short by the way i mean you deserve that um but yeah, let's let's jump in. I think there's so much to talk about, you know, and and, and that we can go to. Mary, do you, you want to start off or ask them or you want me to start? Well, I want to start because I do want to jump in. And Lona, I want to tell you that when you spoke at the wave afterwards, there was a buzz on campus about when you were talking about the schools, because honestly, I don't think there's anyone else talking about that. Yeah. And the students were blown away because they were like, I'd never thought about that. You know, there's kind of looking about when can I graduate? And I want to open a practice. And you opened like everyone's mind, like, oh my God, there's so much more you can do. They used to think chiropractic and research, they're the two things. You put a third thing in there, which is like, where else in your community can you go in? So that's where I want to like, I want you to jump in and then start talking about the school project. And then we have lots of questions. Okay. That's <laughs> so just great. tell us like what's happening now with it. Yeah. So, okay. So we've been in the school since I think the door started to open in 2016, 2017, and it started with the teachers and then grew into the students in our division one school district, which I believe has like nine individual schools within it. So, you know, it naturally grew like the first place went well with the 20 students. And then all of a sudden it was 32 students. And then it was the second school. And then it, it just kept going. So where we're at now is in our district, all of our schools have access to chiropractic in our district. And we just helped another district vet a chiropractor and start last year. Um, and we basically acted as consultants for them. And then we helped a third district start um, with another local chiropractor there. So we're in that process now where people are starting, especially locally for us, they know Chippewa Falls, our area has had chiropractic now for six, seven, eight years. And they are 
interested. And what I found that is most intriguing to me is that for the schools, it's more normal than it is for us as chiropractors. The schools are used to bringing in services to help the students. It's more from our mindset that we're like, wait, can we be here? Is this appropriate? Um, And so that's been eye open. I'm going to step back for a second because, you know, let's get a framework so that our viewers even understand what is the school project. Yep. And, and 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 what's it doing? Where's it come from? And if you could just, you know, sh- share with us that. Yeah. So <clears throat> at first, I, when I usually speak to chiropractors about it, I say like, you know, envision care in your office <laughs> and a table and how you give adjustments. And really the only difference is you're bringing that into a different four wall. So in this case, we're going into a public school system, right? So when we began, it was like we brought packed up our portable tables, brought our paperwork with or anything digital that we needed for trying to educate. Um, but we just did it in a different location. So that's how it started. And really, it started for me um, hearing another chiropractor talk about like, you know, can you imagine how the drug companies talk about, you know, mass buy-in with vaccination? Why don't we talk about that as chiropractors, like bring it to the people, get to the point that like, instead of them asking, like, where's the vaccine records when they enter school, they ask, has your child had a neurological checkup with a chiropractor, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, that just really opened my mind. And I realized like our districts, our school districts are really big players in your community and they are big business too. Um, and so I started to think about like, how could I serve them knowing that there's a lot of stress in that environment more so than ever in post 2020. Um, like how do we come in and, and not, um, intervene, meaning like they're there for education, right? The teachers are there to teach and the students are there to receive an education, but, Obviously, we know that the more our nervous system is tuned up, we're probably able to sit in our chairs longer, focus on what the tasks at hand. And of course, what we see in our practice with kids, we see with kids receiving chiropractic adjustments in school. So it is truly getting a chiropractic adjustment at school. It's pretty simple. And and is it for every kid? Is it for, you know, people who children who are showing signs of, you know, whatever the, the labels are that are out there, you know, ADHD and all this other stuff that they label kids with, or is it, is it just like the kids come in and every week they get checked, you know? That's a really good question. So when we started, we didn't have as much parameters of like who we were going to serve and why, but part of what we did when I say we, my partner is um, Dr. Amanda Lonigan. Um, she and I started to really dig into looking at like, how did PT and OT and some of these other services that are very um, normalized in school, how did they get to the point that now they have like OTs and PTs on staff at most schools? And we realized that part of how those services are identified is like children who have challenges in the educational process are generally who's going to be vetted for those services. And those services Services have to show that they make a marked difference on that child's ability to engage in the uh, education process. So we were like, okay, we're not going to try and reinvent the wheel. Do we believe that all kids can benefit from chiropractic? Of course, right? But part of what we realized is there's a lot of kids, especially in our district, and I'm sure there's many other districts like this, that were not the kids that were, for various reasons, going to have parents who could come in maybe pay for a care plan or even, you know, make the travel arrangements work to come back and forth um, to adjustments every week. And so we really started to arrange our care to be vetted for the kids that either had, like you said, like different labels that would they'd be receiving special ed classification um, education or we're having other disturbances where the school district is kind of in a position where they're like, we'll try anything. Those were the kids that we wanted to work with. And that's really how we've grown the program at this point. Nice. Nice. Wow. And, and how does the, how does the payment work? Yep. So this is where, as we expand, which is part of what we're going to talk about too, there's probably certain States that are going to be easier to expand than other States. So, you know, one of the things I say to Kairos, cause that's usually and the second question out of their mouth is like, who pays for it, right? Yeah. Um, is it's still like they're coming into the practice. So it's the parents. But if the parents, um, like for instance, a lot of our kids are on state Medicaid and in the state of Wisconsin, it's poor reimbursement, but there is reimbursement for subluxation diagnosis only. Um, and they get a certain number of adjustments. And so we're able to work with that and utilize that and a and the model we're building, because we don't have the overhead of a traditional brick and mortar practice, we can make the business model work 
because our overhead is lower. And so we are able to like use that reimbursement. Now, my long-term vision would be that we have packaged up the data well enough to show that the schools should just employ us because we're saving them money and they handle the billing and all of that stuff, just like they do for the PT and OT. Right. Oh, that's great. That would be great. Mm-hmm. Right. No, I think it's so cool. And, you know, when you, when you walk into a, a, any public school, I mean, go back to when we were in public school or, or I think even private school, you know, there's always nurses. Yes. You know, there's always people that are there. Maybe, maybe an OT or a PT comes every once in a while, depending on, on what the situation is. But, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a employed nurse on, camp, you know, at the school or two or three, whatever it might be. Right. You know, someone's not doing well, they get sent down to the nurse's office. Right. And, it's just interesting because, you know, when you talk about this, why isn't chiropractic inserted into, you know, the healthcare, not sick model, but the health model of, you know, in our public schools where where children are developing and this is the, what a place to meet them at, right? Right. They're yeah, there. totally. What, what happens? What's in, funny what? is the nurse in one of our schools is the one that rounds up the kids and brings them down for the adjustment. So yeah. we're like, oh, we love this. This is great. Yeah. That's great. That, that was one of my questions. I had a logistical question of like, yeah, when when do they get like when do they get adjusted and how does it not interrupt their classroom time? Yeah. So in the elementary schools, um, we have an assistant that comes in our like uh, larger schools and she runs and gets especially the elementary school kids because obviously someone needs to like walk them down. And so she may go to you know, so-and-so's classroom and grab three kids. And then she like brings them back down. And and then the chiropractor is able to stay in where we're set up with the portable tables and, you know, stay adjusting. Um, but in our older age population, so like the high schoolers, you know, they just get a text message to their phone to come on down and they come down and get adjusted. So <laughs> it's pretty easy. It's so wow. cool. And, and I guess for me, the, the comes up is what happens in summer? Like they're out of school right now. So do they... Right. What, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of them don't get adjusted in the summer because, like I said, we're serving a population that many times there's barriers that, you know, we do have some office hours at our traditional brick and mortar practice that the school based chiropractors on our team set up certain hours there, but it's a fraction of the kids that normally are getting adjusted when school's on. Mm-hmm. So, like, compliance at school is great. If they're at school, they're getting adjusted, but the right. summertime is challenging. Mm-hmm. Right, right. We are in, um, like some summer education for them. So depending on if they're in summer school, we're there. And then also um, there's something called the Boys and Girls Club here. Um, and so that's actually one of the things that have expanded this year is we just found out that the four boy, Boys and Girls Club um, all wanted chiropractic starting this summer. So we've got that on the docket as well as all the four Ks just um, got notified essentially that the school district would like them to begin this program as well. So it's it's amazing. I mean, you know, when you look at this and you kind of, you see the model that you've developed and, um, and first of all, congratulations. I mean, I, I, you know, Mary, Mary and I have been around for just a few years in chiropractic and, and I've never heard of it, you know, and, and it's just wonderful to see, you know, and, but it kind of leads us to the next phase, you know, like, like we're, if we grow like this and let's talk about scalability, you know, because, because to be able to scale something like this, you know, I know that we could do it in every city as long as there's chiropractors there. Right. So that's not a problem, but yeah, (laughs) but, but but what you're seeing is what people see in practice and you see in practice is that, you know, you got into the school system and now 4k wants in and now the boys and girls club wants in. And the next thing you know, it's going to be, you know, whatever group wants in, you know, you know, Girl Scouts and boy, you know, uh, whatever. It's all. It's just going to continue on. And you know, wh- where's the scalability aspect with that? Right. I, I mean, I I have been saying this, and I don't want to like make this a prophecy, but I think that the public is more ready for this than than the chiropractic profession really is. Yes. And so, you know, we've traditionally been kind of like, oh, people don't get it, but it's like, no, no. I think they do as long as someone's bringing it to them in a clear and simple way and and the access barriers are brought down. Um, And so, you know, I really like think we have a supply and demand issue that's upon us. You know, I, I, our team gets really jazzed up. I have an amazing team to be even like playing in this realm at this point. I have a lot of people who are just like 
servant hearted as well as like highly intelligent at like how to be nimble with this thing um, for everyone from our office managers to our, you know, our other docs. Um, but we all can see it that it's like this, the new issue that I feel as like the, um, kind of the visionary at the beginning of this project is just now like almost like grabbing like the steering wheel of like, hold on. Like, it just feels like it's rippling out. And, and it's like, there's a part of me that feels overwhelmed by how much opportunity may be right in front of us to bring chiropractic places. It's like, A, how do we steward it well? How do we make sure that our chiropractors are equipped and are speaking chiropractic? That's in my mind, like principled chiropractic, innate chiropractic. You know, I, I, would pinch myself in the beginning of it and say like, why is this happening? Right. Like why, the, why would the doors open the way they opened in very weird ways? Um, and I think some of it is just like my team's heart. My heart has always been like, we're not coming in to adjust the kids with all the problems, right? We're here. We're, we're like a light for them. Like everything is actually perfect and it's okay that maybe they don't sit in their chair well and they, you know, have a lot of things stacked against them, but we're not the people here labeling them. We're the people putting our hands on them and giving them hopefully an uplift for their day and, and a chance that they wouldn't have had otherwise. And I, I feel really, um, rooted on that, that we want to make sure that that stays true in this beginning phase so that we don't misstep. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, do you feel, do you feel at this point, you have a really good foundation and a really good model that you can take it out now and teach other chiropractors how to do it? Yeah, I do. I think, I think especially locally, we don't know every state, but we know things in Wisconsin anyways. And we had a chiropractor that we've been working with in West Virginia, um, so we get a fair amount of questions now of like how to get this started or how to um, open some of the doors. And, you know, we're working with um, several research teams, we're working with Life's research team and Heidi Havoc's research team. And we're trying to not only to collect more of the data that's like the teachers notice this, the subjective stuff um, or the child reports this but also like what's happening, right? And if we can package that up, now I think we can really have conversations with administration in a way that's different um, and hopefully shortcut some of the things that we had to like figure out in the beginning. So yeah, I think this model is like almost like your practice is waiting for you as long as the door <laughs> opens. There's a lot yeah. of people there that are ready to get adjusted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you, you said something about going to them, you know, and, 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 I think that's probably been in any business. It's not chiropractic, but in any business, when you wait for people to come to you, you know, instead of reaching and going, where are the people at? Like, you know, my gosh, walk through an airport and, and, and who's at an airport. You've got McDonald's, you've got, you know, whoever out Starbucks, you've got all the, and those places are probably busier than some of their, you know, their stores are right. You know, in a city because, because they went to the people. And, you know, and it's so convenient and it's right there. And I, I feel like, you know, and once again, you know, we just don't, we, it's a, you said it's a supply and demand. That's what you said before. And we don't have the supply. And part of the reason we don't have the demand is because we don't have the supply. In other words, we've got a capacity issue in chiropractic. 100%. You know, yeah. and we've got to change that. But the other thing that happens in my mind, at least when you, when you were answering Mary's question is that, you know, there should never be a chiropractor not employed. Yeah. You know, I mean, our students, I mean, it's it's changing so much. Listen, when I went in practice in, you know, 1981, there was very few associateships. I mean, you just, if you went to associate, you went to learn for a year and then you went out and did your own thing, you know. Um, it was like you hang a shingle up, you know, and you did that in 2009, whatever. But, but you know, it's not, you know, nowadays, it's not necessarily the the the, the, the common thing to do, which is great. You know, um, you know, having multiple doctors and practices like you have is a great thing. But the next phase that we need to get to, you know, is going to be having chiropractors in, you know, wherever in airports in in, you know, there, there's a gentleman who's looking to get chiropractors in Walmart, you know, and have a place there and, you know, be able to have them where the people are in school districts. And, you know, we should be having people clamoring, you know, because we have a supply problem, right? Um, I love yeah, it. You yeah. cracked an egg there that, that, yeah. 
might overflow out of the frying pan. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> that's where I need your help. We need more, we need more schools, right? Like, uh, we do. We do. Well, we need, yeah, we need, yeah, and what we need to do is, you know, have the schools that are existing right now, you know, be filled up and have waiting lists to come in. And, and, and that's getting our vision, you know, moving on the same phase, but you know, that next phase is just, is, incredible i mean it's really beautiful to see and and i just want to just you know it's very inspiring you know for me i'm sure mary it's inspiring for you to to see this you know that because what you're doing is you're taking it and so lovely to take it to the to the children you know to the yeah. to the kids and have them experience chiropractic at an early age and what will they do later especially when they notice a difference this summer from not getting checked They'll come back and they'll say, oh, I can't wait to, you know, and then we just got to educate them. And, you know, it's, it but start them young. It's beautiful. I agree. And I think what one piece that I do usually underline when we're talking to chiropractors <laughs> about growing the program is like how important the staff really are because they're, um, and so educating the staff, especially if there's staff turnover, like we're still just like you have table talk, right? Like, and you have constant ways that you're, you're teaching people chiropractic you know, we still have to do it. We just do it in a different format because there are a lot of times the people who are able to identify, let's, let's send paperwork home for chiropractic for this child, this child's struggling, or, you know, maybe they, you know, there's a terminology in education. They call it the IEP, the independent educational plans. Right. Um, and we're not part of those yet, which I like, but if down the road, we were more collectively house kind of like PT and OT, we probably would have to do something like that. Right now, if there's a child that's struggling, even if they don't have an IEP, they can still send the paperwork home for their parents to like sign them up to start to receive chiropractic care at school. So, yeah, I, you know, I'm excited about where it could go next. And and, and like, I mean, like, what's hitting me right now, Mary, you know, our daughter's homeschools, you know, homeschools her kids. Right. And and yet uh, Braxton is what he goes to school. He goes to a homeschool, physical school an enrichment um, program one day a week. Mm -hmm. Once a one day a week, and I'm thinking like, what a great thing to be able. To, in my mind, it's spinning. You know, I, I start spinning with this stuff and saying, it, it should be there for all the homeschool kids. You know, to be able to come in, and you know, they're already kind of keyed into certain things already. And uh, um, yeah, so it, it's the sky's the it, limit with it. I mean, it's it's like it, it's mind blowing the the opportunity for this and. It's like we, you know, when we were in practice, we go out to businesses and we maybe do a lunch and learn and we talk to businesses, <laughs> but it's like you hit this gold mine. Cause it's like, you went to schools and there's schools all over the country and there's a lot of them. This thing could just blow up, you know? And there's so many kids struggling too. And there's right? so many kids struggling. And I guess I, I do have kind of a question. It's not logistical, but like you just said, so is that the teachers, they're sending something home to the parents. Like, was there ever a time, can they ever get the parents together where you could educate them? Because are there, there's probably parents getting these slips that are saying, my kid doesn't have a back problem. Why would they yes. see a chiropractor? And then who do they ask that question to? Well, so we try to do, we try and frame it up two ways. We've learned a lot of things in this last seven years. Yes. One of the things is we are present at their like um, sign up day, right? So we're, mm -hmm. we have, you know, we're there just like they're getting orientated to where the school is. It's like, these are the school chiropractors, right? So we're there, mm -hmm. they can talk to us. So yes, yeah, some of the parents are well aware of what's happening at this point, um, which has also been how we like, you know, if we started in the elementary schools, as those kids got old enough to be in middle school, then we we're in the middle schools. And, um, and then it's just naturally grown in that way as the kids age. Um, but then also what goes home in the folder isn't just sign up paperwork. It's also as much as we can educate. And then we're using partners like SCED to try and send drips of education, both home to the parents, as well as, you know, we've got drips of education on like, just living more of the chiropractic lifestyle going to the teachers as well. So it is part of kind of like the whole school districts. I don't even like the word wellness anymore, but wellness, you know, right, right. Initiative. yeah. Um, yeah so we try great. and bring very simple things to wherever we can to just kind of keep that conversation going. It's amazing. You know, I mean, you know, in a conversation we had before you were talking about it, you had a term that was really beautiful called accidental entrepreneurship. And this is like accidental entrepreneurship, right? Yes. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of like when something happened, the way I interpret it, I'm going to ask your interpretation because you brought the words up, but it's like, you know, 
things just happen, you know? And I think when that path, like you said, the path just kind of opened up and it was weird how everything, you know, but people will tell you that's how they got, got into, into their profession or that's how they got into the relationship that they're in or whatever it is, the story that is there, you know, um, looking back and seeing it, you know, and, and, um, I love that word. You brought it up. Talk about it. We don't, yeah, we, I heard got it about, in a we've got about three minutes or four minutes. Okay. <laughs> so we're, I, I want to I want to sneak that in if you guys don't mind. Yes, I, I heard it in the last year and I thought that's it is <laughs> accidental entrepreneurship. And it's like most of us as chiropractors that own a practice accidentally open our practice in the way that we realize, oh, my gosh, I need to like provide a business for myself. So I'm going to open a practice. Right. And that certainly happened here. It was like accidental scaling. Like I have an idea, I could bring this in. And then, oh my gosh, what if this thing goes bigger than I had ever thought it could? Now I've really got to figure out how to do this thing. And so for me, the last five years, you know, through, and that's how I became a coach for the remarkable practices. I I was learning a lot about scaling properly with team and repeating communication and looking at processes and looking at data so that you actually are making business decisions and not just feelings. Um, and I had a lot of good feelings, but then I was like, well, I have no data here. Right. And so as I've learned how to lead differently, where I have feelings, yes, but also data, um, it's it's allowed us to put a lot more structure in place so that this thing can keep growing and we can do it more strategically. And I see that as one of the biggest hurdles for us. There's the hurdle of there's just not enough of us. And then there's also the hurdle of like, we are still the ma and pa shops, which I think is a beautiful thing, but we also need to like keep the business hat in order <laughs> so we can start to employ more chiropractors in the right relationship and, um, and really feed um, them and our teams, as well as be able to serve a lot more people in that process. So becoming less accidental about our entrepreneurship is like one of the things I'm passionate about too. Yeah. 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 And, and when I graduated school, they said, all you need are your, your hands and your heart. And I realized later on, I, I mean, when I got in the practice, I got pregnant pretty quickly. So I didn't do any business stuff. I just showed up and adjusted for like 10 years. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, that's right. There's a business happening here. <clears throat> in the beginning, it was kind of rough. I didn't want to look at the numbers. I felt like, oh, it's taking me out of my servant's heart. And it's kind of wild because now I'd say, yes, you need all you need is your hands and your heart, but you need your head too. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, and that's kind of what you just said. It's like right. you have to look at the numbers if you want to be successful. And and with a conversation we had yesterday with a doc that we did a life by life west with. Um, I told them, I was like, yeah, it's the, it's like the not sexy stuff. I go, you're teaching this stuff that like no one wants to look at. It's not sexy. It's not pretty, but you get all these great chiropractors who are great healers doing great work and their businesses are failing. Right. So right. And it doesn't right, we want to stick our head in the sand, right? Yeah. Right. It doesn't take a lot. And you know what happens and what we're talking about yesterday, right? You know, it's kind of yeah. like you give a kid a credit card. Remember when you got your first credit card? I, when I got my first debit card, Right. That was bizarre. I mean, I would just go to the bank every week and I would take money out of the machine. It was very, they just came out. Right. And these, you know, and, and when I got, out. when I saw my bank balance, like, you know, a month later, it was like, what? Like I'm <laughs> or a credit card. Right. And, and Someone's then, you know, stealing my money. Yeah. It's like, where's, where's that going to, you know? And, and, but then you don't want to look at it. And that's why, you know, the world, you know, people are in debt, not because of, not because of the cost of living. It's because of the cost, how much they're spending. Right. It's kind of like, you know, wealth isn't how much you make. It's how much you save and bottom line, you know, and, and it's just so interesting that people can get the idea that when you understand business, then you can serve more. Yes. Right. Right. If if I went around the chiropractor and said, what's a KPI? They go, uh, a cereal? I don't know. Like, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, they, they have no idea what key performance indicators are. Right. And and then how you set those up with your team members. Right. You know, so that they know what's wanted and what's needed. And it's it's not hard stuff. But we have to learn it. And that's the that's the key. And I'll tell you what, this was the biggest egg we had to crack that I had to crack at the college and I couldn't with all the hours they have to do and all the mandated classes and all the things that they have to do. So we set up our last year and I was complete preceptorship. Our students are out. So while they're, and it's completely online our last year. So while they're out preceptoring, they're learning the business inside the office. Right. And, and so that hopefully if they, whatever they choose to do afterwards, they can do, you know, 
be an associate, be whatever, but it's just, you know, there's ways of cracking the egg, but, but we need to get this information to chiropractors. It's so important. You know? Yep. I agree. I love it. Accidental entrepreneurship. What what comes next? Not non-accidental. What would that be? (laughs) Intentional. Intentional. Entrepreneurship, right? Intentional. I I think that's where we got to go. Lana, it's been great. You are you are truly a, a a breath, just a breath of fresh air. It's just so cool to see all the things you're doing and and how many kids you have. I have two with my husband, and then my husband has three older stepdaughters. So it depends on the weekend when you're here, but we have two together, two boys. So two and sometimes five. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. And you keep the balance of that. Your husband's not a chiropractor, is that correct? Nope. Oh, he's an electrician. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so you keep the balance with that. You keep the balance with your family, the balance with your practice, the balance with your lecturing. Um, your youngest is how old? He's three and a half. He. Oh. Um, He'll turn four in like a month. You know, I, I don't like the word balance. I feel like harmony is what I try it for. Yeah. And like, I have realized like, and we just had this conversation this week because my husband got like electrocuted at work. It was his birthday. He had a terrible, he had a terrible week. Right. And so we're having this like debrief last night of like, what's working right now and what's not working, you know? And, you know, I said like, you know, at every level of like this expansion, whether it's expansion with kids, expansion with like, you know, we did an addition on our house. So a physical expansion or expansion in the business, it's like there's this ability to just realize like what worked before is probably not going to create harmony right now. Right. And that's been a lesson for me of just like when, you know, we think we're at capacity and then we have to like, you know, reorganize and then things get more balanced again. And so I have a very supportive husband. He like understands that this is like, I think my life's work to do this type of thing. So it's not like I can just stop it. You know, he probably is sometimes like, Oh gosh, another chiropractic thing. Right. And I, and thank God for chiropractic because it lets us bring our kids to things. You know, I just brought Jack, my oldest to Italy to speak when I was at the event last weekend. And so him and I got to have a, like a, a trip together and it was good for my youngest to stay with dad and have to figure that out too. You know? So as much as it feels hard when you're away, it's also like, it's good. So chiropractic has taught me how to be a much better um, partner and parent and family member by learning this like above down inside out way of living. But I don't know that I would call it balance. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I I agree with you. I agree with you. Harmony is good. Balance is like, balance is always this, right? Trying to attain it. And you, you know, yes. you really can't. Harmony is just like, you're just in it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. And sometimes it's chaos, right? Yeah. A checklist, yeah. Mary, a checklist. I know. Well, I'm going to erase that, that my- from my, from my, listen, I'm, you know, I'm constantly looking. We're constantly always changing our vocabulary, right? Yes. And that uh, used to be my favorite word. I was at a women's retreat once. They went around like, what's your, I don't remember, what's your word? And I was about years ago, this was, it was balanced. And everyone said, that's perfect for you. You're so balanced. You're so that. And as people were saying that, like, it already started to not feel good to me because I was like, no, 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 I'm not always balanced. That's, that's why I love it. Like, but yeah, I changed that years ago. I was like, no, I don't like that word anymore. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, it feels like you have to strive for it because it feels like yeah. it's always, it, yeah. yeah. It's the same and thing. I'm like, it's the same thing as being proud, right? You know, we right. wiped that out the vocabulary. I'm proud of we you. Never, well, we never say that to our kids anymore. Never say it because that means yeah. that you, you know, then now you have to live up to my expectations. And, Instead of you inspire me, that's inspiring. You know? I love that. I'm so going to take I that. own it, you know, instead <laughs> of the proud, you know, so I just tell everybody, you know, that's inspiring. I think I might've said it in this talk, you know, because I am, I'm truly inspired, but all right, well, we'll get into this the next time we'll go into communication. <laughs> Lona, it's been wonderful. Thank you. I mean, we could go on and on and, and I just, just, you know, thank you for all that you're doing. And, 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 you know, I know you keep your family first and I know you got your priorities, right. Um, But, you know, you are, you are somebody who people can aspire not to be like, but to know that what's possible for them. Right. You know, cause we never want people to be like us, you know, but we, but I just thank you and for what you're doing. And um, um, yeah. I was going to say, and I, I think you'll inspire people to like, to not compare themselves to you, but to like, like you, you have a lot going on with family and all, and practice and all this stuff, but it's like, but if you can do one more thing and if you can just be a little more impactful and that's, that's what I hope listeners, they look at you and think like, again, not like, oh my God, I can never be like her or I want to be like her, but more like just, just find your passion projects and just, just do something. And, you know, and thank you. Like Ron said, thank you for doing what you're doing for chiropractic. This thing is huge. It's huge. And I, it's I don't huge. think you're even grasping 
how <laughs> big it is or how big it's going to be. Well, maybe you don't want to. It's kind of like looking at the money. I don't, yeah, it probably I don't want to know a, what this monster is doing, you know, behind. We'll probably, just take it. I'm sure it's overwhelming if you think about the big picture. But before we go, because I know we're getting down, we have one question to ask you. Yes. Thank okay? you. So the ethos of Life West is called lasting purpose. It's to give, to do, to love, to serve out of one's own abundance. So out of those four words, to give, to do, to love, and to serve, at this point in your life, which word resonates most with you and why? And just like a 30-second answer. I think it's to love, um, which would have not been my answer 15 years ago. Um, and I think that's because like, it has to start with yourself. And I think that's where a lot of times we struggle um, is we want to serve everyone else. And we don't put ourselves in the equation. And so I think when I love myself better, I love my family better. I have more grace with them. I have more grace with my team. I love my team more. You know, it's a, it just ripples out, right? And you know what you guys had said earlier of like um, wanting to inspire people to to find their passion projects. It's like chiropractic teaches above, down, inside out. You know, so our practices, our purpose, our life force has to come through us. It can't be someone else's. And so. I I love that about chiropractic is that we really should be authentic. It's okay to wear a mentor's ideas for a while, but it has to eventually come through you, you know? So yeah. love is probably where I would be at. Yeah. Great. Perfect. Thank you guys. Well, we love, love you and uh, and thank you. Thanks for being with us today. To our viewers, thank you. Thanks for, for, for coming in week in and week out and just, you know, sh sharing time with us because uh, you are sharing time with us. And, um, you know, Dr. Lona dropped a ton of wisdom today. And and I know there's people out there that, that might feel stuck. They might feel whatever they're feeling or they're looking for that next passion project. I think this would be a great uh, a, a webcast to send to them. So please, and thank you for sharing because we're growing because you're sharing it is really what's happening. So thank you so much. Um, you, we drop these every other week. The opposite weeks, we drop our life, our life leadership, life, life West leadership line. Um, and, you know, it's open for everybody. So please just keep spreading the word, keep loving people around you, the word that, that, that Lona's word today. And um, just know that you are more powerful than you were ever led to believe and that within us we've got the power to make and the vision to make great changes the ability to do that and all we have to do is just put one foot in front of each other and stay in harmony i got that worded <laughs> so i will see we'll see you that the next time we come back from dr lona dr murray and myself we love you see you later bye-bye